Sorry, we had a bit of a, uh, an outage there. It was because we showed Devin Sultan dick. Um, I'm pretty sure that he, he put a curse on us. All right, uh, where were we? We were on Amanda's duck face. Okay, and after Amanda, Bill Walichka, Bill and I, Bill, Bill and I, we, uh, we had our, uh, some fun back in the day. There was this guy we hated at Much Music. He was like a real poindexter. And on a snow job, this poindexter's job was to take, it was to go to every hotel room, and there was like a hundred and something of us, and slide the piece of paper with the production schedule for the next day under everyone's door. Um, so we, uh, we followed him quietly, and so when he finished on one floor, we would go and we would reach under the doors and pull the pieces of paper out from underneath the door. And then uh, floor by floor, we did it until we got about 80% of the, pic- the, the schedules back. And then we took them, we put them in front of his, be- his, his hotel room door, knocked and ran and hid. <laughs> And he opened the door and said, what? He goes, oh, fuck <laughs> you! And he was furious. And he, he knew right away he came pounding on Bill's door. He's like, Bill, I know you're... I, and I know Ed's in there, too. You fucking guys. And we're trying not to laugh so hard that he can hear us. <laughs> he had to go and put them back on another 80 doors or something like that. And God, oh. if we weren't tempted to do that again <laughs> a second time. That son of a bitch. All right. <laughs> He's a good dude. Shall we name Bill. us? Or? Michael Williams, I yes. Know. One of the founders. Uh, founding he still talks VJs. really regularly to Michael. Yeah, he does. He's one of the founding VJs at Much Music, a founding uh, uh, black face in. Uh, not black Easy. face. Easy. <laughs> but a founding a black personality in uh, Toronto media uh, when there weren't, weren't so many back then. He, uh. he, and uh, of course, the next one as well. You know how they Young. link the, 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 yeah, the OGs Master. together? Yeah. And they like, got both got small paragraphs. So what's that about? Yeah, yeah. like what, where's the respect, man? These no guys respect for the black the bottom, They're at the bottom of part two. It yeah, doesn't these seem guys fair. Were, all right, were founding, all right. Ma- Master guys. T. I mean, come on. Oh, no, okay, Matt Wells gets no, no love. question. What, what uh, the heck is that? Matt Wells? Clip not available. Who the hell was he again? I have no idea. Question. Oh, I think he was out east. Oh, yeah. yeah I think he did much east. All right, next. Bradford. Bradford. Yes, Bradford. Yeah. Uh, I love Bradford. Bradford uh, won the VJ search, went on to be a great VJ, and a, uh, he's currently living in New York and acting and stuff. Great Rachel eyebrows. Rachel Perry is now a, a mom and an artist living in L.A. And uh, well, That's and, apparently and that, it. Uh, and that's it. Wait, scroll down further. There's, there's a com- Look at the comments. <laughs> All right, look at the comments. It's a zero comments. Oh, there's, I, I saw, uh, maybe it's just on the actual Anyway, um, so here's the thing. There's at least three or four of those faces that were never VJs. There's people who were VJs for about 35 seconds. Um, I'll be Lewis is there. I mean, <laughs> um, where the fuck am I? Where the, f- how do you do a thing about favorite much music VJs and not put me there? That's. That's obvious. That's a deliberate slight. You can't do a thing about my... You can't think about much music in, when it was worth watching without thinking about me, who made it worth watching. How do you do a list like that? You put Matt Wells on there? It took me a second to figure out who the fuck he was. Matt Wells, a fine man, by the way. I, I, didn't, I didn't even know who he was right away. Hannah Simone was there for about a minute. And me? Nothing. Well, they didn't, you- nothing. I'm not there at all. What the fuck, Indy 88? What the fuck? Christopher Ward's not there, who was the guy did Fromage before before you did. I don't give a fuck about Christopher Ward being there. No, All right, I'm not what's there. His name, the guy to test pattern. Uh, Dan Gallagher. Dan Gallagher. Gallagher. Where's yeah, he? yeah uh, yes, I know he's thanks for that delicate he's reminder him. that he's dead. Uh, Dan <laughs> Gallagher was a great talent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Laurie Brown? What? Laurie Brown. Laurie Brown. Okay, I'm not gonna go through everybody who's not there. All I care about is that I'm not there. Are any well, of the electric circus hosts who weren't Monica Deol there? No. No. And, you know, I, Again, I don't give a shit about them. Why am I not there? Those people could be considered peripheral. Me? I was central to what much music was. Maybe part three onward get full. Who says right there's up. a part three and why wouldn't I be first one in part one? Well, Master T was in part two. Yeah, what the yeah. fuck is that all about, <laughs> India? I'm tired of this fucking disrespect, okay? Indy 88, fuck you that you don't put me on that. How do you let that thing go to publishing? Without me being, nobody called me. It's not like I didn't didn't offer comment. Nobody asked me. What? I don't. What? Prick me? Do I not bleed? You sons of bitches! All right, I'm tired of this disrespect. Cause it's not just them. First of all, other thing to people on the internet: don't talk about me. Oh yeah, I remember you from the '90s. 
fuck you. I wasn't just, I started in the 90s on Much Music. I didn't leave till 2007 or 2008. And you know what? My highest ratings were between 2000 and 2008. People are like, oh yeah, you're, I, we're, we're gonna do a 90s throwback. Maybe have you, fuck you. I don't wanna do your 90s throwbacks, okay? <laughs> All right? I am more current than just fucking 90s. And even when I wasn't, I don't give a shit. And then there's the other disrespect. Uh, the, uh, it's, uh, the takeoff. Remember the takeoff A fundraiser? Yeah. A few weeks ago? Yeah. Okay, it was, uh, it was basically a, 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 a tribute to, uh, Dave Thomas's, uh, it was a, to help raise money for Dave Thomas's nephew. Oh, okay. All right, Dave Thomas, I got no issues with, uh, one of the people that inspired me to get into Canadian television through SCTV. Uh, they did a reunion of, uh, Bob and Doug McKenzie, yes. the first one in a yes. couple of decades. Rick Moranis actually came out of retirement to do it. Uh, Rick Mercer was there. Uh, Kids in the Hall. You know who was in there? Me! And you know what? I offered. I sent them a bloody email saying, hey, I'd be glad to be part of it. I want, I'd like to help the, the tribute. Nothing. First, the publicity company says, I'll be glad to pass on your generous offer. Oh, really? Thank you for that snark in your email. Smug. Somebody started an hashtag on Twitter. What? Justice for the song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they're tagging and they're tagging Indy 88 news. Oh, oh good. Nice. I, you know what? I just see this now. They they probably wrote up something really nice for you for part three, which is No, I don't want to be in part three. If there's a part three, take Somebody me out. Somebody right now is just deleting all that. And the song. Last scene cursing at the station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is your tribute. That's and right. then putting this clip on it. <laughs> Why on earth would we have forgotten about that? Them. All right, um, and uh, anyways, uh, they didn't. I sent an email to the guy who's in charge of that whole production, saying, "Look, I'd like to uh, contribute something. I'd be glad to contribute." That's your mistake. Why? The minute you care, they lose interest. If yeah. you offer, what are they a preteen no, this boy? Is Canada. So the minute you offer, the minute you're interested, then you're not big enough for them to care about, and so they leave you off. It's that bullshit that happens in Canadian media. You mean Canadian media in general, which is all bullshit? Well, yeah, but yeah. that's the Minus thing. You show. have to not pursue them. They have to come to you, or they don't value what you bring to the table. I had to learn that with anything involving geek media or gaming or anything like that. Unless they ask me, they think I'm too small to bother with. It's this weird self-hating yeah. thing. It's like going to a bank Canada. and asking for credit. Yeah. Fuck you. But yeah, when like, you get a thing in the mail saying you've right. been pre-authorized, that's right. take all of our fucking money. Yeah, it's, it doesn't work the way it should, which is you reward initiative and, and people who care enough to, you know, come forward and pitch something. No, you have to sit there like a princess in a tower waiting for somebody to ride up on the horse and climb the whole thing and slay this monster and so you can, they can get into your boudoir. And then they'll work with you. But if it's your idea... Forget it. Then they move on to the next desperate thing. Well, fuck them, okay? Fuck them. And you know who else? Fuck. Fuck the Walk of Fame. Canada's Walk of Fame. Because you know what? Years ago, they did a thing, a big publicity thing, saying they wanted Canadians to suggest who they wanted to be on the, 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 uh, on the Walk of Fame. And the biggest votes, the largest number of votes, me, by far. You ever see me on the Walk of Fame? No. And here's why. Here's a letter they sent. Spots. Can we look? Wait, yeah. This isn't the letter. What? No, hang on a sec. This is part of the letter. Okay. It was, uh, I don't have the letter. I have the things you gave me. Yeah, that's fine. That's what this is. This is part of the letter. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, they're talking about how the, 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 the blah, 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 each nominated their favorite Canadian for induction. These are then qualified with the following criteria. They must have been born in Canada or spent their formative years here. Check. Fine. They must have a body of work. Check. Mm -hmm. They must have a minimum active career of at least 10 years. Check. By then, it was like... 20, so check. Didn't didn't they give a start of the Call Me Maybe girl? Oh, maybe. Oh. I'm pretty sure she doesn't have a 10-year career. Uh, Come I, on. No, no. Oh, no, she did. Carly Rae Jepsen. Yeah. yeah. You That's suck up. Yeah. All right, and then four, they must have made a national or international impact. Check, check. Okay, then there's the next thing. Here's the final thing that, that pissed me off. Over the past few years, we've received hundreds of thousands of nominations. We've only had three that have been for non-humans. Winnie the Pooh, Franklin the Turtle, and Ed the Sock. To date... Our policy has been to induct only humans. Perhaps it is time that policy be reviewed. I will ensure that this be listed as an agenda item at our next board meeting. <laughs> Note the date. <laughs> yeah. November 27, 2006. <laughs> 11 years ago. What, do you do board meetings every quarter century? You get along very often. <laughs> you sons of... And, and here's, here's the ultimate thing, okay? They follow me on Twitter. 
Yeah, look. Follows you. You see the Canada's Walk of Fame? They follow me on Twitter. You'll follow me on Twitter, Canada's Walk of Fame. Will you put me on the Walk of Fame? No. You know who you put on the Walk of Fame? Canadians who happen to have been born in Canada and then spent their entire life and career in the United States. Them, you'll put on the, the, the Walk of Fame. But, you know, because William Shatner was there. William Shatner, yeah, born in Canada. Has he ever made any... He, I think he made the movie The Kidnapping of the President here in 1978. Other than that, I don't think he's ever shot anything in Canada. But hey, put him on the Canadian Walk of Fame because he's contributed so much to uh, uh, Canadian culture. Son of a bitch. There's some people there that do belong there, but I should be there, you Walk of Fame. And by the way, what is this bullshit, this bigotry against what they call non-human characters? Should, what about Casey and Finnegan? Are they not huge part of Canadian culture? Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Uh, the Rusty, single trunk? Rusty the Rooster and Jerome the Giraffe and Friendly Giant. Yeah. Right. Littlest Hobo. Pokeroo. Uh, Pokeroo. Uh, Shoe and Boot from Read Along. Uh, any other suggestions? Well, there's the one I have the picture of because I knew we were talking about this it's and it's more? my favorite. What? But people don't know, it, know her by I name. I know it. The mouth from it's, on, it's It's... A Muffy the Mouse from today's special, yeah, yeah but Anana Anna Anna from Tele Francais. Anna. What the hell is that? Anna. That's Anana. Anana, okay, is so famous now. Anana is almost more famous on the internet than she ever was on TV. That's a Anna she? Anna. Yeah. That's a pineapple. She's got a bad skin condition. Anana yeah. was a, a character on a show that was designed to teach kids French. And Tele so Francais. it's like, yeah, Tele Francais. Tele Francais. But it's Anana ne parle de pas. And it's like, Anana. And this is Anana, because of course Anana is French for pineapple. That's freaking scary. Anna Looks like Carmen Miranda's hat came to life. Anna Anna is now like a dank meme on 4chan, too. What's a dank meme? Just a meme that when you want to be funny, you say it's a dank meme. Oh, I see. It yeah. Like she's known to laugh. Yeah. Is that? Wow, that's fucking scary. But, they talk? I mean, Did they dance? Oh, yeah. No. No, oh, thank you. Like this, this, is a, this is a hallmark of Canadian broadcasting in two languages. That you know is is still relevant because she got picked up on an internet meme. But yeah, Anana. Did I Mark mean, Daly ever get like a Walk of Fame? He was the guy on Cops, yeah. the animated series. Mark Daly deserved uh, much more than just the Walk of Fame. Mark Daly oh, yeah. was a fine human being, and he was the voice that that gave much uh, City what TV a, much music character. What but about what those, the hell is that Anana thing? That's scary. how much with the sleep tonight like, looking at that thing. Gary well, asked, no, Ed, you say would it like you it's smash. a like I should just oh it's a pineapple. Would it's scary smash? as hell. Like I think it's <laughs> yeah. possessed no, by Satan. See, that was the beautiful thing about kids' TV in the eighties is it didn't have to make sense. Well, it's not that it, it made that it needs to make sense. It just does. It shouldn't be blood curdlingly frightening. <laughs> Wasn't Polkaroo Canadian too? Yeah, of course he was. Well, what about those? What about those two Sesame Street characters that were only on the Canadian version of Sesame Street? Who were they? They were like a little otter and a polar bear. What was that pedo bear? No, that's yeah. something very, no, that was, very that was different. Elmo. Ed. That was very, that was Elmo. very different. different? Okay. Very different. No pedo bears. No. All right. No, I'm uh, doing anyway, no pedo bear. I think that we should start our own Walk of Fame. For the those of us considered subhuman, never mind non-human, they consider us subhuman. We should con- we should start our own walk of fame for uh, those of us who've contributed to Canadian culture and who have made an indelible mark on Canadians over the years, and yet are being snubbed by the walk of fame so they can give a star to Carly Rae Jepsen. By the time uh, the cement from that that star uh, dried, that was her career was done. Yes. Okay. <laughs> She's a fine woman, but even so. Um, so I think we should start something, but it won't be a walk of fame. Because why would you copy the American thing, like, exactly? Well, How about a that? wall of fame? Like, why didn't they have a wall or something like that? Why copy the American thing when all you're going to do is compare it to the American one, and you're always going to come up second? Americans sure. are known for walls now, too, apparently. Oh, oh there you go. Nice. Yeah. Okay. okay, I think we so should what, do that. What would it be? Like, uh, some sort of peace garden? The slide of fame. The, sl- the slide of fame is pretty. I kind of well, like that. Well, you put everybody's slide name along the slide, and you slide your ass over. Yeah, them. No, there's no respect fun. there. <laughs> well, it's like the careers. They just cut the top, start at the top. Oh, no respect there. <laughs> two on the nose, Anthony. Two on the nose. <laughs> All right. But like, think... like, we're gonna have like a garden. Or something? Yeah, we'll do a peace garden. Like the the the. the a memorial to the, the, the people who were killed in like the Salem witch trials or something like that. There's a garden you go through and there's like benches and stuff like that. What about, what about like a wheel of fame? So a you wheel? get to choose who's... Yeah. Where are you going to put the wheel? Under the umbrella tree. 
<laughs> what if it's what if it's like are we gonna put it next to like what is it that that uh, museum of human rights or something like that in Winnipeg? Yeah, I think that'll be appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, is, what does the chat say, Giada, Anthony? Anything? Would that would that the new Walk of Fame would include Canadian mm -hmm. cyborgs? Like who? Is that Sean asking? I don't know. Yeah, yeah Sean, Sean okay. is asking if there's cyborgs. Sean is actually a cyborg. That's why he's asking. Uh, but does he's he have not a, on does he have a chip? No. Well, he was on our show. We could do the Cup of Fame. It could what be about... similar to the Stanley Cup. Every time there's a name added, another tier That's not whatever, bad idea. gets added to a cup. We need any real estate Some... there, yeah. Yeah, we should do a big red cup. What about Sock of Fame, somebody says? Solo said. Cup of Fame. A clothesline of socks with names on them. All right, yeah. now the chat's just getting stupid. Yeah. All right, um, we gotta, we're gonna we're going to have to work on that. Um, so that's that's a project. And, and Walk of Fame, listen, uh, if you want to make amends, you know, maybe you could have that board meeting you were supposed to have sometime in 2006 and uh, revisit this ban you have on those of us who've been entertaining people for decades, but for some reason you determine we aren't worthy Maybe you should reconsider that. Let me know when the board the meeting comes up. Is it some, it, will it be before 2020? Because I, I, I might have some time available to attend. All right. Um, let's, uh, let's move on. There's other issues we want to talk about, but I've completely blown out the, the direction of the schedule. Yeah. Uh, Liana? Yeah. Do you think we could go to that uh, video? What, the Max video? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah. All right. Let so what know, this maybe. is, yeah. Yeah. our friend Max, <laughs> our friend Max, <laughs> Uh, did a uh, Hinterland Who's Who. We decided to update the Hinterland Who's Who because they're classic Canadian uh, productions, uh, that opening uh, flute and everything, which was actually uh, written and recorded by an American who wrote the theme for Kojak. Um, that's all, it's part of our heritage, but we got to update it a bit. That voice is a little bit stilted. So we asked Max to redo and reloop some of these uh, Hinterland <laughs> Who's Who. So, so uh, this is the first one. Yeah, it's too. The Chipmunk. Chipmunks are the kinds of animals that I don't get to see every day in my area. Well, I do know about them. They love to eat everything from wood to food. Are they eating stumps? Grass, fruits and vegetables. Most likely to eat a lot of wood. Naturally, these kinds of animals, as some of you may know, are wild animals, which I don't think you should want to ask because they'll eat everything. Every, Every wood, wood on, your, on couch, your couch, parts of your, your bed, bed, the shelves, the shelves that have the wood, wood, even your, even hockey, your stick. hockey stick. And they're pretty, and they're pretty, and they're pretty and they're fast, fast too. too. They can one for one pretty quick. For a more for complete more story, story on the chipmunk, chip why not contact, contact the Canadian Wildlife, Wildlife Service, Service in Ottawa? An applause for oh, that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. 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 And uh, for your follow-up, for your for your second one, I understand you'll be doing bear. Oh yes, I'm gonna be doing some bear. Yeah, so so you'll be doing another Hinterland Who's Who about the bear. About the bear. All right, thank you. Good job, Max. Yeah, that was great. Nice, nice. Yeah. That was great. Lots of love. Man. Lots of love. All right. Um, I don't know if you guys heard uh, this past week. There was a news story about uh, Jill Soloway, who's the executive producer of Transparent and I Love Dick. Um, Do you? And she she talked about sorry did that offend you Gianna? Oh no, I asked if uh, you actually do love Dick. No, that's the name of the show. Yeah, I know that. Gianna. I know that was a stupid joke. Uh, it's, well, Whatever, go on. Sorry. Well, what if I did love Dick? And now you just said it was a stupid oh, no, joke, and fine. I can't tell anybody. Okay. All right. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, fine. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> she uh, she was at some kind of uh, press thing. And they asked her about something, you know, a show that she, you know, or TV presentation that she found really offensive. And she said, it's Pat. Remember Pat? That character from Saturday Night Live? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she said it was a terror, like basically, she said that it was a, a, a slur against transgender people. And I thought, you know what, if that's true, they should take that off the air. And then I realized they did in 1994. <laughs> Like, re you're going to reach back? What are you going to say, that the, the Coneheads were Francophobic? Um, <laughs> next thing you're going to tell me that the, the that, that Greek restaurant and John Belushi is the samurai were somehow uh, racist or, or something like that. And that's ridiculous. Um, now, uh, I don't understand how anybody could feel any kind of hatred towards uh, Pat. Now, there is uh, there are quotes. We have...
Oops. Well, I, I was there, this to is show a, there's, this. There's Jill Soloway. I, I probably should have screened this graphic. Uh, we there's there. Jill Soloway, and, uh, and uh, it's Pat, uh, the person she's talking about, the character she's talking about, played by Julia Sweeney. Next. Um, here's her quotes. She called it an awful piece of anti-trans propaganda. What? She said it was a hateful, hateful, awful thing to do to non-binary people, to create this character that the whole world laughed at. All right, look. Jill Soloway. Here's the thing. Um, first of all, uh, often social change for various groups come uh, after being uh, comedic characters. It's happened for, for, for black people, for Jews, for gays. You had to be sort of a comedic character for people to get comfortable, and then all of a sudden it slowly become accepted by society at large. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm saying it's a fact. Here's the other fact. Nobody ever said that Pat was transgender or non-binary. The joke was that nobody knew if Pat was male or female, and they, they didn't know a polite way to ask. That's so, what non-binary is, Ed. What? Being neither male nor female. No, we don't know what she identified the point is, or Pat's he identified not as. funny in 2017 because we know what to do. The whole idea of Pat back in the day was nobody knew whether Pat was male or female, and they didn't know how to ask. So they'd ask around, and Pat would always give some vague answer, so they couldn't find out if Pat was male or female. Now we just say they, and there's no problem. We move on. There's no cultural context for the entire bit. Okay, wait a second. To my knowledge, at no point in time did Pat confirm being male, female, non-binary. At no point did Pat declare but that, any particular that is gender. That's what non-binary is. If no, you're not Pat male or female, Pat you might... do not engage in the gender binary. You are non-binary. No, how do we know Pat didn't consider his or herself to be engaged in the gender binary? We don't know. This big assumption that, that Pat was trans or non-binary, we don't know. Pat could have ident been a woman who identified as a woman or a man who identified as a man. The joke was that we didn't know. So Jill Soloway is officially outing this character, Pat. By, by, you're outing Pat as transgender when Pat really should have been able to come to that conclusion, you know, his or herself. There, you, you can't call this anti-trans uh, propaganda when we don't know that the character was trans. What Jeez. are these other pictures you've sent me? Oh, well, look, yeah, you just take the next picture. Look how much people love Pat. Kids even went out for Halloween as Pat. Look at that. How could that be offensive? Kids went out people love Pat. Went out as Halloween, Halloween Pat. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Why? The Halloween Pat? Halloween doesn't necessarily mean you love the group in question. Well, okay. My, um, my issue is more when you look at the titles of... Uh, Jill Soloway's own work, it's really leveraging identity politics in a way that is equally, you know, punny. And why is she criticizing one group who's just sort of laughing at human nature and the general, you know, issues we have with P's and Q's in polite society? And she's got a show called I Love Dick and Transparent. Are you saying a bit of hypocrisy at work? Yeah. Yeah, there's her shows. She's, oh. the, I think, the executive producer, maybe the creator of both of those shows, which is a step up uh, before she got uh, this far in are, Hollywood. Are you saying that transgender parents are invisible, Jill Soloway? How hateful are you? How much erasure are you engaging in in the Testify. name of your show? Go what if sister. I don't love dick? Are you excluding me if I don't love dick? What if I love a man without a dick? What do you say to that, Jill Soloway? It's the same garbage. You like, like an action figure? Yes, Ken. Ken. Yeah, okay. I am Ken sexual. Uh, Ken yeah. sexual. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, that, that's, uh, that's Jill Soloway there. Before yeah, right. Jill Soloway had success as an executive producer, uh, her previous job was a stunt double for Rachel Maddow. That's not true. <laughs> yeah. No, I think she was a stunt double for Keith Olbermann. Nice. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, other, other annoyance this week is the Does whole... Does she identify as, as she? Is that her chosen pronoun? Oh, no, she's non-binary. She's they. She's, she's they. What the hell? I'm going home. She's no, come back. She's, you dug us into this whole song. Okay. You need to get us out of I don't know. I hear the your name. way out of the shit. Yes. I hear the name Jill. I automatically, I'm sorry, go to she. I just, it's just, I'm so old-fashioned. Okay, they. Jill, 
Soloway is now plural. The they, um, the uh, thing about Pat used to be is, a stunt double for Rachel Maddow. The thing about Pat is Pat was also really socially awkward. Like, Pat always had the yeah. right? Yeah. But, Super into ween as well. Yeah. Judging from the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? Right. No one saw that movie, Anthony. Except I watched it. It's Pat. You Did watched the Pat the movie? Release? Yeah, I saw it. I okay. thought it was fun. It that was, was that fun. period where every SNL sketch became a movie. It was a fun romp. What was going on? Guy or a girl? Nobody knows. But if you wa- when I was a kid, I watched the credits at the end because I wanted to find out was Pat a man or a woman, and it was a woman portraying someone who may or may not be a woman. And now it seems like she's kind of co-opting the past for her own political gain. I don't know. Maybe the I'm thing wrong is, if that. you look back, there are so many things you can find which, by today's standards, are objectionable. But do you really score points? Talking about a, a program from 20 years ago, which today wouldn't actually be on the air. Wouldn't it be better to point out that we've come so far from 1994 that It's Pat wouldn't be something that people would consider funny these days? More I don't know. I still think Pat was funny. But anyway, yes, yes Leanna. I, I think it would have been fine had Jill Soloway stayed at This Bothered Me When I Was Young. Because there are lots of things involving ginger people that bothered me personally. But I realized as I get older, the things I'm okay with and the things I'm not okay with really make no sense. Like, I am I hated the whole anything. Like, cause I mean, you're just like, Annie, can you sing? And tomorrow, I hate that. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I over? love you. There he tomorrow, goes. Tomorrow, you're only a day away. Is it just because, like, it happened so many times that now you're just tired of it, so you hate it? Well, it doesn't bother me as much. I mean, the only thing, the other thing that really used to bug the shit out of me was that whole gingers eat souls. Ah, yes. I felt like it because when I was a kid, I actually, there was an a huge megachurch right near my school. Pentecostal? And, ah, I don't know what they were. Megachurches generally tend to be Pentecostal. Maybe. It was, it was huge. And they, a bunch of kids who went to this church came in one day and said that I was going to hell because I had spotted skin. (laughs) They had read in the Bible that I had spotted skin and therefore I was going to hell. And when you're a kid, this is really upsetting because what little kid wants to go to hell? And so to me, when I started hearing that ginger steal your soul, ginger eat souls, I remembered this traumatic childhood memory that happened the same year I got fake knifed in school. So this gives you a little sense of my high school. Or sorry, this wasn't high school. This was much before high school. But, you know, that bothered me. But over time, I've sort of learned to laugh at the whole thing and even... I make those jokes now, but then when South Park did the thing about ginger kids, oh. I thought it was hilarious because that well, is that deliberately was, that was hilarious. That shit was you scary. know, yeah, and it's scary. it's comedy, and and I think a lot of the things South Park does like that is a commentary on bigotry. Well, they're holding using, up a mirror to it, right? Yeah, but people yeah. think it's just an attack, whereas it's supposed to be like think about yourself and the way that you're kind of treating people. Yeah, look, this is all stupid. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the whole kick a ginger thing. And that became this huge thing where kids actually got hurt and the court said they weren't at fault because South Park did kick a ginger. And, you know, we're, we're like this weird minority, but then we have white privilege and so we're not allowed to complain. There aren't enough of us anyway. There's nobody whiter than gingers. I mean, there's the good stereotype where they say that people who have fair skin and red hair have a higher pain tolerance. That's true and it's not a good thing. Probably not. I've gotten into a lot of trouble because of that. <laughs> and we're very drug resistant as well. Anesthesiologists are terrified to treat me. <laughs> oh, no. But there, there are things. And when people, like if, if she, Jill Salway, or they, had just stayed, this really bothered me as a kid, I'd be right on board and I thought that would be awesome. But to call it an awful piece of anti-trans propaganda, when has Saturday Night Live, especially back then, ever been even remotely propagandist? Like, propaganda is very much They're a, anti-propaganda. And every character on SNL was a character created for the whole world to laugh at. Right. And so if we're to use this, oh, we include a non-binary character, and that's bad because we laugh at them, we can't include black characters we can include gay characters men on film well, the, the epic to, you know yeah well to get back to i mean if you're talking about references from south park they did that one episode about family guy where they yeah. had the manatees doing the idea balls and if you take one idea ball out of that tank they're going to stop writing because right. either everything's okay to laugh about right or nothing is right but and this is but i mean it's also you know remember the the great sketch comedy horribly underrated sketch comedy show in living color 
Yeah, I remember that. I love that show. Remember, hated it. Well, there's also Handyman. Yeah, but also, I mean, they joked about homelessness. They joke. I mean, Jim Carrey played a female character. Remember right. Vera, the world's ugliest woman? Yeah. And, with the, you know, like, God. this was a marginalized people making fun of marginalization, and it was brilliant. But when people don't know, w knowing whether or not to laugh at something is such a white person problem mm. that it drives me crazy. When, when you grow up in disadvantaged circumstances, anything that lets you laugh, is a good thing. Yeah. And so this attack on humor, I'm sure it's well-meaning, but calling a sketch comedy show propaganda of any form, I just have to, I'm as so just left-wing progressive as you want, but when you start going at comedy, laughter is a, a, an easy way for people to feel more comfortable with people who are different. And even though it started off rough, that's not, it's not okay to label something hateful Someone should because just, you well, don't like the bit. Especially not retroactively. Yeah. I mean, today the discourse is about, you know, he and her and binary and all the all these other conversations mm -hmm. that are going on. But to then go back 25 years and say, well, this is such transgender. That wasn't even part of the discourse at that time. It was a totally different conversation going on. And it was obviously just meant for the ambiguity of it all. And if anything, you could say that it forwarded that conversation a little bit. Right? And to go back and, and soapbox it, it seems like person making these comments is just kind of trying to toot their own horn or at least get a little bit more notoriety for the things that they want to talk about today. Yeah. Has anybody ever asked Jill if she likes fish sticks? What? I oh, love fish on. sticks. I mean, I think it's interesting that shows created by just black like creators. like fish sticks in her mouth? You mean like to eat them? <laughs> I'm moving I don't know. beyond. The South, South Park one joke, one. we were talking about it. Oh, I don't even understand. Yeah, I'm, I'm Here's the thing, though. Because that could mean something different. Here's the and, thing. Well, um, yeah. First of all, I didn't think anyone was laughing at Pat. I thought they were laughing at people's uh, discomfort around Pat and not knowing how to socially approach it. So I, they were laughing at social dis discomfort. Yeah. And also, pro no one ever said that... That you should hurt Pat. Pat was portrayed as lovable, never and the friendly, yeah. and no one ever never said it was okay to I... abuse or swear at Pat or do anything. So that how is this pro propaganda is something that is deliberate, deliberately sending a message? If back in the day, the idea of trans and non-binary wasn't on people's minds, you couldn't have had propaganda against it because nobody was thinking about it. Yes, Leanna, you uh, raised, first of you all, the I, I hate that this segment requires us to do like a deconstructed close read of. Pat and comedy. <laughs> sure, yeah. I really, really, really hate this. Yeah. But also, when you see, you know, Shonda Rhimes or uh, Kenya Barris or people like that, black creators talking about their shows and who they want to watch their shows and things like that, that you never hear them going off like this. I mean, Spike Lee kind of does it, but Spike Lee was a previous generation. The black creators of today, they're always like, I want my show to be universal and I want people of all kinds to watch it. And that's how we break down barriers and that's how we, you know, make the world a better place through entertainment. You do not hear people who historically, you know, they have stories within their families of, of poverty and oppression and horrible, horrible stuff. They're moving on. I think the rest of us should as well, because as long as People who are different are people who were afraid to talk to because you may offend them. Mm. Those people are going to remain marginalized. And this is very much a first world white person problem when we're calling SNL propaganda of any kind. Well, you know, Clearly. the thing is that it's like yeah. Howard Stern always does. People criticize him because he had on uh, people he called like gay Pete and stuff like that. And he had on people who he called, you know, re retarded and things like that um, and stutterers. And he had them as part of his show. And people said, you're exploiting them. It's like, no, you know what I'm doing? I'm giving them the chance to show that they are human beings like everyone else mm -hmm. and that they can, we, we can have common laughter, we can get along. They were treated like they were sort of part of his on-air family because these people who are supposedly so sensitive would rather you take retarded people or whatever they're called today. Oh, um, Ed. Special needs. Special needs. Okay, thank you. You take special needs people. You take the differently abled people. And you know what? Don't put them on television. Uh, put them somewhere where they're out of public view. Because if you put them in public view yeah. and you call attention in order to make comfortable the fact that the, 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 their differences and, and who they are, then you're somehow exploiting them. You know what? Uh, all these people that Stern uh, put on his show, I have to give him credit because he, he looked after them, them as best he could. He, was uh, them he helped them out. And you know what? He, he, he managed to make, uh, to give people who would never have the chance to speak for themselves the chance to speak for themselves. And that is my soapbox. 
Um, <laughs> that should be a segment. The Wait, weekly yay. 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 All right. Um, just before we go to the next topic about Google, uh, here's oh, a bit God. of a consumer Sorry. alert. <laughs> like this wasn't difficult enough. Uh, okay. Here's a, here's a, you, you want to not do Google? Wait, let's do Google. Okay. We anyway, here's it. A, a photo. This is a consumer alert. I'd advise people to stay. Oh, I forgot. No, I forget this one. We're Owl not doing this? This <laughs> That's was a what you Walmart have under thing. consumer alert. I know. Oh, I we're not doing thing. this? This is a... No, no wait. I made a I, just, I don't. I don't have an image for cave? consumer alert. Cave? Oh, I do have cave. Okay. Yeah. Here I am again. Um, Should we do it? Hey. Yeah. Okay, here's a consumer alert. Okay. Um, don't go here. <laughs> <laughs> this is what, you know, if you, and there's a lot of times at conventions and comic conventions that people have signs that say free hugs, walk around downtown saying free hugs. When it's a sign leading into a dank looking cave, <laughs> probably not a good idea. Yeah. Um, you're better off even paying for a hug. Yeah. No wonder they went out of business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Dan, doors Three open. Looks like business like is a boom. I don't think anybody's <laughs> been there in some time. Or they're all inside. That, that's, this is like, you know, Bag End, The Wire. Yeah, that's like right. It's, it's the, lo the ghetto in Hobbiton. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's, oh right, that's right. Frodo went in yeah. and never came out. Yeah. That's right. Free hugs. Sometimes free things <laughs> are the most the expensive. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on. <laughs> Uh, Google had uh, was in the news this week uh, because a Google engineer, an employee, uh, issued a manifesto, a 10-page manifesto about how the company is failing to meet its diversity targets and why he thinks they're failing to meet their diversity targets. Now, uh, and he, as a result, uh, he got fired. Now, his first problem, his first mistake is if you're going to publish something you call a manifesto, you need first he to have a cave in the that. woods. No, no he didn't not. call it that. Oh, so someone else called it yeah. that? Yeah. All right. It's actually just like a work group document. It's not, I've seen the original. It's not. I a tried to read the original and my, my brain started to bleed. Basically, the one with all the <laughs> charts and the oh footnotes. My God. So basically, what the guy was saying is that the attempt at diversity at Google. Uh, to include people of color and women, he especially focused on women, uh, weren't working. And he said they weren't working because they were based upon political choices and political correctness choices as opposed to biology. And he used a bunch of highly suspect, to me, uh, sources to claim that the reason that there's not more women in engineering or in computers is because biologically they're just not interested in it. Um, How do you make uh, yeah, exact, exact. Thank you, Anthony. Oh, there's science. Yeah, he he used. Yeah. Okay, like make... you can make science up about anything, and you can misuse science about anything. And this idea that women weren't involved in, were underrepresented in uh, computer technology, computer programming, and the like, because women just find it icky. Um, it doesn't hold up. The, the the number of social pressures that keep women out of jobs that involve math and technology and so on, that's the problem. And he was saying that, no, it's not social pressures, it's biology. Women can't help it. Women just, they prefer other jobs. They're not interested in being here. So let's not spend a lot of time trying to bring women in. Let's not have, telling Google, don't spend time uh, doing, going out of your way to try to recruit uh, women and uh, people of color, especially women. Women are just not interested. They're more interested in being benevolent. And, and caring, and they're not into, they're not interested in in the highly. The, what did he say? He said that, that being in computer programming is a high status job, and women don't seek status. Dude, being in computer programming, there is no high status. Only amongst geeks and nerds is that considered high status. If women didn't like status, women wouldn't buy ten thousand dollar handbags. There you go. Just say it. Back Done. Like boom. Just My son. That'd do it. Like, but, the, but do you think he should have been fired? Nail Here's in the next the question. See, that's the thing. I don't. I read it, and I think he should have been fired fire mostly because this guy's a fucking idiot. Um, his arguments. He starts out with everything. He, every paragraph starts out with. Now I believe in diversity, and I'd like to see it happen more often. And then he'd go into a paragraph that talked about how it, it, he felt exactly the opposite. It was like when somebody says to you, "No offense, but." You know what's coming is going yeah. to be offensive. I'm not yes. racist. Okay, but. now do you think he should have been fired, or do you think he would have been forced to spend a, an afternoon with the female employees at Google who were allowed to tell him what they thought of what he did? Well, I don't want like to be. An HR I, I, think, round table to me. I can understand him being fired because. Um, no, that wasn't the question. Oh, what, what do was you the think? Because this is what works in terms of diversity. This thing blew up. 
the leaker hasn't been fired because this was an internal memo that got leaked. Don't forget. So the leaker hasn't been fired, but this guy has. But what's more effective? This guy getting fired so the women at the company never get to tell him what the impact of what he did was, and they don't get to stand up for themselves. They're once again forced to be protected by a male CEO. Is that better? Or is it better to have the guy have to face consequences by his coworkers and feel, actually feel the impact of what he did. I don't think firing him teaches him anything. Well, based on the comments he's made since he got fired, I think you're 100 percent right. Well, that, that's because uh, Breitbart and uh, what that he did an interview with that guy Jordan Peterson that got pulled uh, off. That. That's been pulled. Did it be, get it's pulled? Been pulled? Yeah. But he did an interview there, and like all these alt right. Out, I'm not saying Jordan Peterson's alt right, but other alt right. No, there's nothing right about that. Outlets are, are they're they're Cindy Sheenaning. This guy, do you remember Cindy Sheenan, who had a very oh, Cindy Sheehan, the, the, Sheenan. Yeah. She had a very simple narrative of her son died, and she wanted to talk to President Bush, and so she stayed outside the ranch. And this was a narrative that we could all understand. And then she got co-opted by these hard left protesters. And where's Cindy Sheenan today? We don't know. It's happening the same thing with this guy. What's his name? James Damore or something like that. Something like because that. they booted him out the door instead of this being somebody who could learn. Could have because, been a teachable moment, you're well, saying. Well, what, what I found is he kept saying, I believe in diversity. I, he, wants, he wants diversity to work to the point that he took a big risk in writing a very poorly thought out, not, not from the research perspective, but how it was going to land at his intended audience. He didn't think that one through, but he cared enough to take the initiative. And I think that had Google handled this differently, yeah. there actually could have been a really positive outcome instead of the epic, runny, it, flaming shitstorm that we're all living in, if you have anything well, okay. online Well, you're right, right in the sense that all this did was contribute to the culture war that has been going on unabated. Well, it no didn't teach anything. anybody anything. Yeah. It didn't, so the people who are gonna be outraged about this are outraged. And the people who were outraged that he got fired then saying that his free speech was infringed upon um, as if you have free speech when you work for a company and send a company a document about the company. Um, those people are outraged too. So all we've got is more people fighting. And yeah, you know what? Him being forced to sit for a few hours one afternoon uh, with a bunch of his female colleagues explaining to him why from their, their experience what he's saying was bullshit. So he got actual, he could put faces to these stories as opposed to looking at statistics from Finland or some horse shit, that would have probably been better. Yeah, it would have been a more teachable moment and it wouldn't have gone forward to help reinforce all this, this culture war shit that's I, going on. But dudes, don't send shit like this. Uh, you, if you have an idea like this, first, well, I was going to say first ask your buddies, but he says that he showed people and they liked it and they I, helped him along. I think this guy got used by other people at Google who agreed with him and because nerds love science, and they, they end up treating science like gospel, immutable and unchanging, instead of this is the best we know now. But the ridiculous thing about this whole thing is computers haven't been around long enough for people to have evolved alongside computers. Evolution takes a really, really, really long time. And he's using a form of science called evolutionary psychology. And four different evolutionary psychologists have said, no, he's right on the science, but it's small to moderate no effects skills. And, you know, people have said engineering is just as much people skills as technical skills. And it sounds like Google is overvaluing the technical skills in their employees and not the people skills. Ergo, this poor guy who didn't have the people skills to to effectively make Rockin what I think place. was a well-meaning point. Rockin hard place. Yeah. And I just know because I deal with guys like this a lot and they're not bad guys. They're not evil. They don't see them. You know, they're not horribly hateful. They're not, you know, hostilely sexist. They've, they've just not been able to context information like that. Is it possible that you spend so much time looking at technical data, coding, doing whatever it is on the technical side of their, of their uh, occupation that when it comes to trying to be like a sociologist or doing something that would relate more to psychology or social sciences, maybe they don't have those skills as much and well, so it gets kind of thrown? It's even simpler than that. Okay. I mean, let's face it, nerds have had a rough road and we're finally in the age of the nerd where all of a sudden these guys have some status, right? All of a sudden, guys, skinny guys with glasses have a place in the world. <laughs> They're trying not to be as big an asshole as yeah. the bullies that bullied and, them, by the way. Yeah, and, and they want... Human nature. They want their time, you know, they want their moment. And just as they got there, 
all this identity politics stuff kicked in. And I hear from guys over and over and over again, like we get this, you know, white cis scum, that means cisgendered person. I understand. Um, uh, you know, misogynist, all this stuff. We get this all the time. No, nobody's actually asking us mm -hmm. what we think. Nobody's talking to us. And that's, you know, what Steve Bannon harnessed by studying World of Warcraft and taking these really vulnerable people and we don't think of them as vulnerable because, oh, they've got this great job and they're making like six figures at Google and all that stuff. That doesn't mean socially they're not quite vulnerable. You can still be awkward and insecure like anybody else, right? Well, a lot of very wealthy people are extremely insecure. And I, I just think, like, I know... Yeah, having, like President Trump. There you go. Hey How about that? Having, having been in this, yeah. in this situation myself where I've had to deal with a guy like this, I hate it when management gets involved and makes a decision for me. I want management to sit there and moderate while I talk to the guy. Like, had this not been leaked and it not become public, wouldn't it have simply just I been a matter of an different. HR thing? Like, you know what? I think, they called be, I think they should be going after the person that leaked it. Because if you've got it, everyone wants to be fucking uh, Edward like Snowden too. these days. I think they should go, because if you've got a company and you let people think that it's okay to leak things, you, the shit that's going to come out, and companies that do have a right to privacy, uh, people within the company have a right to privacy in conversation so they can be frank with each other. Going after this guy instead of going after the person who violated company rules and distributed something that was company work product, why are they not going after him? Why is he the guy who gets off? If it's a him. Him, her, whatever the fuck, they. They. I don't know. Maybe I mean, it was Jill Soloway. That person. But it, I mean, Google's got bigger ah. issues. They're facing a uh, pay gap lawsuit, which is part of the reason I read he probably got fired because if he didn't get fired, then that case, that's the first thing they're going to point to. Like, look, you kept this guy on and he did this and all this stuff. It's a, it's a PR disaster. And handling the PR element is a completely different thing than handling the actual human side of this, which is that we don't start talking about this stuff. And the guy does have a point that Google has been trying to address diversity in its workforce for three solid years, and it's gone up 1% per year when it comes to gender. It's really pathetic. And not only in the technical roles, non-technical roles, there's, you know, one could say, yeah, we're never gonna get parity in tech. Whatever you believe about that, even the non-technical roles at Google, they don't have gender parity. Google has a problem, and I think they're trying to hide that problem by using this guy as a sacrificial lamb. They're throwing him under the bus so nobody digs See? deeper. So they can See? push forward. This is, this is why we have Leanna here. So people can't accuse us of just shit talking. We actually have context. Well, I've been dealing with this all week, and it's really frustrating because the problem is when something like this happens, it emboldens a lot of other guys through the anonymity of the internet, and some women as well, to go, yeah, women aren't as good as tech. And I've been furious at this because it just happened to be the week where I rebuilt the computer for this show. Just going to say, like, yeah. it's just like, we're I'm, live now because of you. Yeah, but the problem is that people like me get treated as aberrant. We get treated as an anomaly. I'm a demographic of one. So if I go in there and try to create content for my interests and say, no, look, there are other women that are interested in technical things, in computers, in video games, in technology in general, hardware, software, the whole thing. You just have to present it differently. You can be just as hardcore, just as, you know, just as technical. You just have to use different analogies and come at it in a slightly different way and cast slightly different talent. They go, no, no, research says women aren't interested in tech. There's, there's no interest there. You're too niche. And so I can't create programming for people like me because I'm told not enough of me exist to warrant the programming. Now that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that is, that is inequality of opportunity. I am being denied opportunities to create content that I think people would be interested in based on this science that yeah, okay, they claim 70-ish, Percent between 69 and 70 percent of people are affected by levels of prenatal testosterone and all this stuff. Come. But 69 to 77 percent of the population means there's a full quarter of the population that isn't typical. It's a lot of people. And that's a lot of people. That's enough people <laughs> to have a very, very successful. You, there are like 40 million game game consoles out there. You only need to sell seven million to have a hit game. Not so you can make a lot of money on 25 percent. Yeah, not to mention the whole idea of the internet is 
being able to figure out who your niche audience yeah. is, right? Yeah. Um, we live, all of entertainment is niche audiences now. So yeah. it's silly to go, oh no, we shouldn't cater to this very sizable minority because they're an aberration. Yeah, people, I'm just so sick of this crap. Well, people are saying television right. is dead. And it, like if it's moving what, towards the internet. What are they saying on the internet? What are they, Gianna, what are they saying on the chat? Somebody's asking, but what if someone leaked to denied your star on the Walk of Fame ad? What if what? Someone, denied your, denied someone your... le leaked who denied your star on oh. the walk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know who that is. I know is. who denied my yeah, star on the walk. No the necessary. thing is, the fella's dead. So there's there's no point bringing his name up. He paid the ultimate price. Um, he paid the ultimate <laughs> price? <laughs> That's right. What is the ultimate price? He's dead. He's, he's just, dead. Listen, oh. He denied me my that's star on the Walk of Fame, and he's dead. If you think that's just a coincidence, fine. You I'm pretty sure. It's, I'm, I'm pretty what are you sure it's a coincidence. Right I don't know. I think I, I'm pretty sure it's correlation, the, the not causation. The works in various ways. That's right. Karma gets you. Do do the Manos hand of fate face. There we go. Oh. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. It look even look, worse. They look like boobs again. Like that's right. All right. Uh, by the way, you gotta be pretty desperate at home if you're if you're gonna like jerk off to these boobs. Then you really need to see somebody okay. because uh, maybe they're ocusexual. If you talk about need, <laughs> if you scrambled the signal a little bit, oh, like like back in the old days yeah. Super, uh, yeah. when they run the Playboy Channel on Super Channel at night, you, yeah. you turn on the, the scrambled channel so that every 40, 45 I, I seconds realized, you get a frame. I just right. realized that Nick happens to be wearing the same shirt that Mohammed wears in Van Helsing. That's right. And now we bring it all together. Small. Um, <laughs> wow. just, what a segue. I just noticed it right now. It took now. an hour and a change like, to get there. Squirrel. Yeah, I have a head walk. injury this week, guys. Sorry, I'm kind of clued up. <laughs> yeah, but we should point out, Leanna actually has, I think, a concussion. And she's still built a mighty fighting still built I, Did I get the concussion before or after that? I don't, I don't, it's all kind of a blur. But the <laughs> thing is, when you're doing highly technical stuff as well, you do tunnel vision. And it does, it is harder to sort of focus on interpersonal stuff. And I'm always like, like the, every week on this show, they see me go, she don't talk to me, I'm <laughs> concentrating. But it's true. There, there are different modes. And I'm one of those people that can switch back and forth, but I cannot do both at the same hey, time. Here, it's here, really hey, for those of you who don't understand tunnel vision, Leanna, why don't you show a picture of that tunnel? What? What tunnel? Cave. Oh, that's not a tunnel. That's... There you go. There, that's ah! tunnel vision. There you go. Max, don't move here, okay? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Max, yeah. this is not a place you want to move into. I don't want to live there, man. No, that's... you don't want to live there. Uh, okay. I think yes. uh, people, I think Max might be living in the back of this place. Yeah, yeah. Mag, well, there's actually bedrooms upstairs here. It's really There's safe. a shower. There's a sauna. Yeah, that, we have a sauna. Pigeon Chef's Row. Kitchen. Their there's facility here is amazing. They do great work here, by the way. They do a lot of uh, production service work and stuff. Um, and their place is amazing. And there's bedrooms here and a sauna. I need to put my TV and my stereo there. Well, Max, is gonna, Max is going to squat. Now Max is thinking about squatting. Yeah, Max see is going to become I a squatter. Waiting how long it's going to take to put row. that idea in his head. When have we started? There we go. Ah. Long day. All right. Um, and uh, I think that's it. Uh, you don't want to do the go? Walmart thing? What? The you don't want to do the Walmart thing? show the Walmart thing briefly. Like, well, this I showed no. it earlier. So yeah, this is, this is an actual oh, display school, like a from year. a Walmart in the U.S. Whoops. Um, right. <laughs> Do I do I have to say anything? No, let's just so. end on that. Open the school, you're like a hero. Buy a rifle, because you know that you could never, never go wrong. You never. There know. could I, never be. <laughs> not, that could never be. Can turn out, you know, tragedy. Wait. I no. can't tell so if it's an optical Google, illusion or not. The guy got. No, the the guy from Google got fired. Yeah. All right. The guy who came up with this fucking ad campaign. Yeah. Still has a job. Still has a job. I have no idea. Life's I not I fair. <laughs> <laughs> like, not at all. Really? Yeah, he's a friend of Ted Nugent. You're Somebody right. fucked up. Maybe it is Ted Nugent because since no one's buying his shit anymore, maybe he works Chuck in the green room fucking Walmart. You know, but this just shows how random offense is, right? Well, like, you know who, firing you know, offense versus You know who it was that set up that display? Who? Jill Soloway. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right. You know what? You know yeah. what? You joke, but there's a bullet in the I love dick. Couple of bullets. Thing. This, okay, th does, does they, that picture of they right there, does it not look... Like, um, at any moment, uh, they would have to run out to a phone booth to change into Superman? That's kind of cool, though. Like, that, that's a Clark Kent look right there. Yes. See, that'd be a cool show. Clooney hair. <laughs> that'd be a cool show. They actually have two superhero identities. All right, um, oh. I'm ready like to go. One's male and one's female, and they do different things. That would be kind of cool. Wow. 
Wow, how transparent. There we go. Well, it would be like <laughs> trans... Oh, like the show? You mean that we're talking about? They're like both yeah. the Wonder the Twins right. because they transform <laughs> into things. <laughs> All right, that would um, be cool. we're done. Trans uh, mammal, I love it. Trans I mammal, thank you. trans mammal, trans uh, mammal. Trans trans yes. mammal. There you go. A man turns into a woman. Turns, turns into, back into a man. Turns back into a man. Yeah, turns animal, back into cat. And then there's in betweens. But there's all the show. animals they turn into are female. So he turns into like a lioness. Yeah. Instead of like a lion. What about like a cat with like a head at each end, instead of a butt? Where would they ship? <laughs> 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 Well, it's like okay. one, they could like bicker. Like, head or, like, like, <laughs> like each, each like, end is a head. A head and a head instead of a head and an ass? Yeah, exactly. And then they ch they fight. How do they shit? Uh, the mouth? Constantly verbal diarrhea. And then they explode at the end of every episode. Anthony, I love the way you're I, I this. learned, I learned something new this week, actually. <laughs> when, when two people kiss, whether it's a man or a woman, 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 man or man, when two people kiss, it actually forms a really long tube from asshole to asshole. True. Whoa. Whoa. So theoretically, if you had a blow dart, it would go in one end and through yeah. the whole system and out the other. Right. There you go. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to thank uh, Matt for joining us. Matt, I hope you picked up some stuff, some, some pointers. Max, for yes, joining us. Learned a lot. Looking forward to the uh, <laughs> looking forward to the hinterland. Uh, oh, yeah, there. And uh, there. so, just to recap, the things we learned uh, today. Uh, uh, Don't fuck hit you. Your head. Fuck you, Indy eighty eight. Nice. Uh, nice. Fuck you, Abby Lewis. <laughs> um, and uh, when you deny me my star on the Walk of Fame, you will die. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Death now. All right. Uh, wow. and so that's oh it. Uh, ready to go? We are ready to I, take I, us I, out of here. I'm fine. What do you mean take us out? We don't have closing credits anymore. We just have a slate. What's the matter? The oh, wire. The wire. The wire. Oh, that was a good show, The Wire. Okay, um, we're uh, ready to go. Squirrel. Anthony, Giada, thank you. You're welcome, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Nick, thank you. Leanna, thank you for coming in, rebuilding the computer, and My having a concussion. My broke, too, this week. This has not been a good week for me. Not a good week. <laughs> you really well, got to start eating some souls and getting better. There you go. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, I'm Ed the Sock. I'm nobody's puppet. Don't you be either. Aloha. Thank you, Pigeon. <laughs> Woo! Good job, everybody.